So, I decided to make an AI that generates messages that look like they came from my Discord server. Why you may ask? Well, no idea. I thought it would be funny I guess and it's a good way to learn more about how artificial intelligence works, right? Yeah, I didn't learn that much because I mostly use projects made by other people to achieve this, but hey, it's still something and it was very fun. Okay, let's get started. So the first problem is how can I make this AI? I could make it myself, but uh, it would take a very long time and I don't know much about machine learning to begin with, aside from what I know from university and the small research that I did in the past. Also, time is a very big enemy of mine, so I decided to look for something that would fit my needs. A quick Google search brought me to this project called NanoGPD, which is made by this guy whose name I probably can't pronounce, so I'm going to avoid it. This guy was the director of artificial intelligence and autopilot vision at Tesla, uh, you know, that small startup company owned by a guy called Elon Musk, I think. He also currently works for yet another small startup company called OpenAI, where he specializes in deep learning and computer vision, aka the guys who made ChatGPT. Hooray for open source! And also, if you are curious and really want to learn more in depth about artificial intelligence and how this project was made, I recommend watching his videos on YouTube. I will leave a link in the description. Unfortunately, NanoGPT is not capable of receiving prompts as input, but to be honest, I'm not really interested in having a simulated conversation with my Discord server when I could just send messages in the real one, so this is good enough for me. Anyway, now that I know what I'm going to use to generate my fake conversations, I have to find a way to download the entirety of my Discord server, which has roughly 2 million messages. Yeah, and it's a small closed community by the way. After yet another Google search, I found this project, Discord Chat Exporter, which seems to be very easy to use. After downloading the latest release and unarchiving it, all I have to do is give it a token. And for that I don't really recommend using your own token, but to use a bot token. It's not very safe to paste your personal token around because someone else could steal it and bypass the login of your Discord account. There is also the risk that you could get banned for probably breaking the terms of service. So yeah, let's be safe and use one of my bot's tokens. So I'm going to go to the Discord developer portal, go to applications, select the bot that I want to use. In my case, I will use this guy called Morpheus, which is for a Discord bot project of mine that is on hold right now. So the bot is offline. Go to the bot page and here you can click reset token to get your token. Make sure the bot is in your Discord server. And if you don't know how to make a bot and invite it to your server, I'm going to leave a link with a tutorial in the description. Now we can choose the server that we want to download from and then we can select the channels that we want to export. We can also click on advanced settings and select JSON. Before that though, you might want to set a higher parallel limit, so you won't wait for ages. But be careful to not download too much at the same time because Discord might detect what you are trying to do. And they will ban your bot. Or you if you are using your Discord account's token. You could probably do text directly, but I want to also back up my server in case anything happens to it. And JSON gives me the most information. I think. I never really tried the other options, so I don't know what kind of information is saved with them. And because this will also serve as a backup of my server, I also want to save all of the media files that are in there. Now we can wait. And wait. And wait. Because this will take ages. We will come back to that in a minute. So while we are waiting, let's play a bit with the Nano GPT project. If you don't have Python installed, I recommend pausing the video and doing that now because we will need it to train our AI. If we look in the repository, we will see in the readme that we have kind of a small tutorial, but which is omitting some really important stuff that you might run into just like I did before making this video. One thing that is really important is that if you are on Windows or even Linux, it's better to install PyTorch separately, and not just by copy pasting the install script that is present in the readme. That is because just by simply doing pip install torch, you will not get the CUDA version of torch. And we really need that if we want to use our GPU to do the training instead of the CPU. To install PyTorch with CUDA, we can go to their official website and select the version, the OS, the package, language and then the compute platform and that will give us a script that we can run in PowerShell or Bash or whatever terminal you have. And we will get PyTorch installed in no time. Another recommendation is to update your graphics cards drivers before installing 
to reduce the risk of crashes and unexpected errors. Now we can install the rest of the dependencies, follow the tutorial, then try to train a small Shakespeare model. The first thing that we will do is to prepare our training data by running the prepare.py file. This will generate a train.bin and vol.bin file in the directory. And now we can run the train.py file to train our model with a given configuration, which in this case is train underscore Shakespeare underscore char dot py. In this configuration file we can tweak a lot of the parameters, but for now let's leave them as default and see what we get. If you get an error like this, then that probably means you are on Windows and you have to run the command with this flag, because PyTorch doesn't support compilation on Windows, whatever that means. Also, if you don't have a GPU and you skipped installing the CUDA version earlier, you can also run this with the following flag. After a few minutes of training, or depending on your GPU or CPU, we should have a really small Shakespeare AI model, which we can run with a sample.py script and providing our output directory, also known as the directory where the model was trained and saved. This should give us some kind of uncomprehensible Shakespeare text. And from now on, we know we can train and generate text samples. So we can start tweaking the parameters, which I will leave as an exercise for the viewer. Definitely not because I am too lazy to do it myself. Now that we know how we can use NanoGPT to train a model based on a text input, and our data let's say has finished downloading, definitely didn't take like 5 hours to download the 2 million messages from my Discord server, we can start processing our JSON files and transforming them into text files that we can train a model on. For that we can make our own script preferably in a language that you are familiar with, and in which is not a pain in the ass to parse JSON, like JavaScript. Well, can you guess what language I chose to do this in? That's right, even though I am very proficient in using JavaScript, TypeScript and using Node.js, I chose to do it in c -sharp. Why? I have no idea. The existence of the type system as well as the fact that the files are compiled and put in a different directory, making me juggle with paths for a while, slowed me down a lot. But hey, Visual Studio has a cool trick, which lets you paste JSON as a class, or multiple classes. All you have to do is copy your JSON, go to edit, then go to paste special, and paste JSON as classes. That's really cool, except the fact that the naming convention is all camel case, and there are some duplicate classes, as well as the fact that most of the class members are not nullable, and that gives me warnings because yay, C sharp. But hey, it got the job done. Now all I have to do is pick out the channels that I want to train the model on, write a script to take all of the files and sort them, because they are split into chunks of 250 messages each with names that are sorted alphabetically for some reason, and process them into a text file, for each channel preferably. Make the text look like the Shakespeare one, and make the author names very predictable for the AI. We also want not to paste the same author name for each message that is subsequent from the same author. Another thing that we want to do with the message contents, is to change the author names into something better. We don't need to process all of the other names that could have possibly been in the server at some point, we just need to process the other names of the most active members, to make them more readable and less nonsensical. And other than that, we need to sanitize the messages, meaning that we need to remove all of the non ASCII characters to not only reduce the file size, but also reduce the number of unique tokens that the AI has to process. Another reason of why I sanitized the input so drastically is because I had some errors regarding unrecognized tokens when the prepare script tried to read the file, though that could have been fixed easily by setting another read mode in the script itself. And one last thing that I really wanted to do was to remove all of the links because those are one of the messages that have the most random characters in them that I can actually remove. There are also a lot of them and I did that by doing a quick google search for some regex that can match the links so I can replace them with empty strings. Then I can take all of the generated files for each channel and concatenate them. Aside from the fact that my script looks like it was written by an 8th grader, now what I am left with is a very large file of text that I can train my AI model on. And now we reach the last step, or at least the last step which involves a lot of time investment. Thankfully you don't have to do anything during this time, except wait and maybe watch the script run and pray that your computer doesn't explode. All we have to do is tweak the training parameters, start training and then wait. Depending on the way you set your parameters, your end result will be between runs in one second but it's absolute garbage and it never runs because it runs out of memory before it starts. There might be a my computer caught on fire in between those but I'm not sure. In my case the first try took about 3 hours and had 10 million parameters 
and my second try took about 9 hours and had about 25 million parameters. For reference, I trained this on my laptop, which is a bit more powerful than my PC and has 24 gigs of RAM, a Ryzen 5 5600H and an RTX 3050, using both GPUs at the same time because I have something called Nvidia Optimus. And also for reference, GPT 3.5 has 175 billion parameters and GPT 4 has 1.7 trillion parameters. So yeah, you can't expect anything more than some garbage. But let's actually look at the results first. Both models that I trained had similar results. And my theory is that my training data isn't big enough to produce something significant, or at least comprehensive. But what is important is that we can get some random gems at times, and aside from that, it perfectly catches the energy that the conversations in my server gave off. So in conclusion, I'd say that this is a huge success. Thank you for watching and maybe give a like or dislike or something. I don't know, maybe put a mage emoji in the comments to confuse those that didn't reach the end. Anyway guys, see ya!